gratia plena. Mary said, He has looked upon the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. These words from the Gospel of Luke reassure us that God can lift us up. And in this time of pandemic and trouble for our world and our community, we do need to be lifted up. And so that's why actually at Easter time in our parish, we sent out in the mail these holy cards of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, and it is an image that um, um, with a description of the fact that the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared in a place in Italy called Monte Barico in the 15th century. And so I'd like to console us all and uh, cheer us all up perhaps a little bit by telling the story of this apparition. But before I do, just to say that the Blessed Virgin Mary, as we know as Catholics, has appeared in various places and times uh, in the world. And we can ask ourselves, why does God send his mother Mary down to earth uh, to speak to us and to appear to us and to give us his messages? Well, I think it's uh, actually uh, in order for these words uh, from the Bible to come to pass and to come true, that God certainly is all powerful and he could do it himself with his power, but he chooses the lowly, he chooses the humble. And so to this day, we know even in our generation, uh, we call her blessed. God has exalted her, he chooses to send her. And she often appears to the humble, to children, to the poor, and she speaks uh, in her humble, motherly, quiet voice, uh, giving us the messages of God. As I tell the story of this apparition of Mary at Monte Barico, you're going to see that it's a perfect example of this passage, that God lifts up the lowly and the humble. Mary appeared at Monte Barico to a woman who was poor and simple, and she was elderly. She was 70 years old at the time of the apparition. And so that should be comforting for those who now are vulnerable, especially the elderly who are maybe afraid and need reassurance that God is with them. And also, as we can see in the image of Our Lady of Monte Barico, that she is this great mother who embraces and cares for and protects all the humble and the lowly children who gather around her. The story of Our Lady of Monte Barico is perfect for this time of pandemic because of the fact that when Mary appeared, it was because there was a terrible plague in that region of Northeast Italy around the city of Vicenza in the 15th century. And it was precisely to put an end to this terrible epidemic that our Lord allowed his Holy Mother to come and appear at Monte Barico. Now, in order to tell the story of the apparition of Our Lady of Monte Barico, we have to go way back in time, 600 years to the year 1426, to a place in Northeast Italy called Vicenza. It was in this place that there lived this woman named Vincenza Parsini and her husband Francesco Di Giovanni de Montemezzo. This elderly couple lived in a little village called Borgo Berga, which was on the slopes of Monte Barico. And Vincenza's husband had a small vineyard up the mountain, toward the top of the mountain. And otherwise, they were a very ordinary couple. Vincenza was a very pious woman. She spent a lot of time in prayer. She did many good works, especially showing great charity and love and help to the poor in the area. It was nevertheless to this woman that the Blessed Virgin Mary chose to appear. So how do we know the truth about this apparition of Our Lady that happened so many years ago in this place called Monte Barico? Well, the historians point out that in the library at Vicenza, there is a historical document called the Codex 1430. And it was written up by public notaries and by the government leaders at that time to describe the events that took place between the years 
1426 and 1430, especially as it says, the marvelous and stupendous construction of the church of the glorious mother of God, the Virgin Mary, on a hill called sacred, and the miracles and other prodigious happenings that took place up there. So this historic document and also obviously the oral tradition of all the people of that region, and of course the existence of that wonderful basilica, which actually was built because of Our Lady's request. Our Lady asked that the church be built in order for people to be freed from this plague. But I'm getting ahead of my story. So this Codex 1430 describes the fact that there was this terrible epidemic at the time. It says, from the year of our Lord, 1404, up to beyond the year 1428, this unhappy city with its territory was shaken and tormented almost continuously by most serious pestilence and sickness. So this is obviously a long time. This is 24 years. You know, we're worried about the coronavirus, which is lasting uh, several months, uh, but this was something that continued in this region for uh, 24 years. And so the document goes on. And so this province, province was stripped of its population and of its people. The inhabitants either died from contagion or, in order to flee the plague, abandoned their houses for years, not without heavy expense and trials. So in the midst of all of the expense and trials of the coronavirus pandemic, it's a good time to tell the story of the apparition of Our Lady of Monte Barico. So the story really begins on March 7th, 1426, at nine in the morning, it says in that ancient Italian, it says, ora quasi terzia. It was the almost the third hour, which was nine o'clock in the morning. Because at nine o'clock in the morning, Vincenza always would leave her home and go up the hill of Monte Barico to bring a lunch or a meal for her husband, uh, Francesco. And she was on her way up the mountain and she got to the top of the hill and once there she saw in front of her this marvelous apparition and as the codex describes in forma speciosissime regine perfulginde which means in the likeness of a most beautiful queen with garments more resplendent than the sun, wreathed in a fragrance of a thousand scents. So we can imagine this glorious vision. Makes me think of Our Lady of Fatima, whom the children said looked like uh, the sun was shining through her, uh, translucent. And also uh, this wonderful description of the aroma, the fragrance, uh, I don't know what it would be like to hear, to smell a thousand different perfumes or fragrances at the same time, but um, Vincenza says that she was wreathed in a fragrance of a thousand scents. Well, this incredible apparition caused this 70-year-old woman to be quite shocked, and uh, the Codex describes the fact that she became faint, and she fainted, she swooned to the ground and the basket of food fell onto the ground. Uh, but then a beautiful uh, description of the fact that the beautiful lady took hold of her right shoulder and raised her from the ground and said, I am the Virgin Mary, the mother of Christ who died on the cross for the salvation of men. I beg you to go and say in, the, in my name to the people of Vicenza that they must build in this place a church in my honor. If they want their health back, otherwise the plague will not cease.
So those first words of Our Lady are very powerful, of course. She introduces herself, and it makes me think of Our Lady of Guadalupe, for example, describing herself as the purest vir uh, virgin. She says, uh, the mother of Christ who died on the cross for the salvation of men. And that, of course, is what we just celebrated in the um, Holy Week and the Easter season. We are celebrating uh, the fact that Jesus Christ is the one who uh, died for our salvation. And also we notice what Our Lady is asking for. Just like at Guadalupe and at Lourdes and at Fatima, in all of these places, Our Lady always asked for a church to be built. Why? So that, of course, her son, Jesus Christ, could be honored and glorified and be made present on the altar through the sacraments. So then the description continues with Vincenza weeping with joy and kneeling in front of this vision of the Madonna. Uh, she nevertheless is worried that people won't believe her. But people will not believe me. And where, O oh glorious mother, to find the money to do these things. And that's when Our Lady insisted. You will insist so that people do my will. Otherwise, they will never be rid of the plague. And until they obey, they will see my son angry with them. And so we can see from these words that Our Lady is promising several things. First, that our Lord would be pleased with them if they would obey his Holy Mother, Our Lady, and also that if they dug in that spot, that a miraculous spring would come out of the rock, and also that they should not worry, that as soon as the building would begin, the contributions and donations would not be lacking. Now, it's what happened after the apparition that really gets interesting, because Vincenza went down into the city and began to tell everyone she could find about the, her apparition and about Our Lady's message to the people, but no one believed her. She even went to the civil authorities and to the bishop, Pietro Emiliani, and everybody dismissed her. They thought she was crazy and they uh, would not um, um, build the church that Our Lady had asked for. And in the meantime, as the document describes, the plague got worse. This document was the Codex was a description of all of the interviews that were taken of people who uh, lived at that time and exactly what happened. And the document goes on to say that it was two years, over two years later, that the Virgin Mary again appeared to Vincenza. On the 1st of August, 1428. And Our Lady appeared and she gave again the same message to Vincenza, repeating the same words. And so the elderly woman went back down into the city, shouting and calling out and going to the leaders of the town. And this time, finally, because of the seriousness of the plague at the time, um, people finally believed. And they began to make plans for building the church. And the Codex reads, The decision taken and trusting only in the hope of God and in the counsel of the glorious Virgin, the building of the church was begun on the 25th of August of that same year, 1428. And so the construction of the church began only 24 days after the second apparition. And several of Our Lady's prophecies came true as they began the construction. It happened that while they were digging the foundation, quote, a wonderful and incredible quantity of water welled up like a spring, overflowing like an abundant river that ran down the hill with a great noise. We can only imagine this joyful sound of the water rushing down the hill of Monte Barico. And another promise of the Virgin Mary was fulfilled that 
money flowed as well. Copious, gener generous donations came in from all parts so that the work could continue. And finally, the construction was completed. And as the church was constructed, and when it was finally completed, the plague in the region of Vicenza suddenly ceased. There is another ancient document dated the 15th of July, 1434, which is also found in the library of Vicenza, which describes the fact that, quote, the building having begun on the 25th of August, the great plague partly disappeared, and the church having been completed in three months, all this province was wholly free of such calamity, so that from that day, by the help of God, it no longer suffered from the ill. So when they began the building of the church, the plague or the illnesses from their pestilence began to uh, diminish, and when it was completed three months later, the pestilence had completely disappeared from the area. I think you can understand why in this time of pandemic, I wanted to share this story of the two apparitions of Our Lady of Monte Barico. What a beautiful story of how God wishes to raise up the lowly and how miracles can happen if we humble ourselves, like the people of Vicenza, when they finally humbled themselves to realize that perhaps God would send his Holy Mother to speak to them and that the message would come through a humble elderly woman, Vincenza. And you can also understand why the church of Our Lady of Montebrico was built and eventually became a great sanctuary, one of the greatest Marian sanctuaries in Europe. It was decorated very quickly with a lot of wonderful art this beautiful statue was made soon after the apparitions and was called the Madonna of Monte Barico. And it was enthroned and crowned in the center of the sanctuary. The sanctuary was constantly enlarged and beautified. This beautiful colonnade was built with 150 arches representing the 150 Hail Marys of the Rosary. The shrine has become one of the most important Marian sanctuaries in Europe, with up to a million pilgrims coming every year. As Our Lady also promised, other miracles and healings occurred when people came to the church built in honor of Our Lady. One of the most famous stories was from World War I, when the city of Vicenza was actually behind enemy lines and the battle line raged very close to the city. The town was spared, however, because the people prayed to Our Lady and promised to celebrate Mary's birthday every year on September 8th, which is still done to this day. And so in this time of pandemic, let us also humble ourselves and trust completely in our Lord and Our Lady. And we can keep praying together our prayer to Our Lady of Monte Barico. O Most Holy Virgin, Mother of God and my Mother Mary, I thank you that you have deigned to appear on Monte Barico, and I thank you for all the graces that you give to everyone who turns to you. Never was it known that anyone ever prayed to you in vain. I turn to you also in my great need, and I plead with you for the sake of the passion and death of Jesus and for the sake of the sorrows of your Immaculate Heart, I beg you to shelter me under your mantle, which is a maternal mantle. O merciful Mother, hide me in the folds of your garment and grant me the favor that I now ask for protection from the coronavirus. O oh Mary, my mother, may I always enjoy your motherly protection in this life and especially in death. And may I have the joy of seeing you in heaven 
and thanking you and loving you forever. Madonna of Monte Barico, pray for us.